One year ago from today, I started the journey that would change the way I see video games. This exact day last year, I started the I'm playing every game on Game Pass series. It mainly helped me branch out from the slowly dying FPS genre. And to date, I've played 100 random games ranging from Doom to Donut County. So for any of you that have been here from the start, you basically know the story. And anybody a little newer, I'll go ahead and give a brief explanation. So I've mainly been an FPS gamer, starting on Halo and James Bond on the GameCube. And over the past five years, I've slowly become more and more competitive in it to the point where I've basically ruined my own experience. And then on top of that, I think we can all agree that the state of FPS games have started declining over the past two years. Warzone 1 was a hacker's dream. Halo Infinite basically had two maps and one game mode. And Battlefield 2042 was basically dead on arrival. Now, I know all these games are widely different now, but we can talk about that later. So in short, gaming was the worst it had ever been for me. Almost all my friends had quit playing. I didn't enjoy the grind anymore and honestly felt like there was nothing to play. Now, I've been chasing this dream of content creation for quite a while, and I was actually almost to the point of giving up. But luckily, I did have one last idea and went ahead and gave it one more try with the Game Pass series. And it has been a huge eye-opening experience and changed my opinions on gaming forever. So I want to dive into the key things I've taken away from this gaming journey and maybe help anyone watching find new ways to enjoy games they already love or who knows maybe we'll even find your next favorite game. So let's start off with some more broad topics and slowly narrow down into the nitty gritty and I'll also be getting into those specific games I've found and loved and what games a lot of people love but I absolutely hate it and honestly got a lot of backlash from my opinion. But either way here are three general things that I've learned through this series that I think apply to everyone's general gaming experience. So let's start off the list with don't bottleneck yourself. And what I mean by this is don't not try something based on someone else's opinion, the game genre, or even by your own skill level. And yes, do take other people's opinions into consideration. But if a game is interesting to you or you think you might like it, who cares what's popular or what the biggest streamers are playing? And just because it isn't your typical genre or even that you're bad at the game, doesn't mean you won't or can't enjoy it. So for example, I'm legit awful at every game that isn't a first person shooter or even in that first person perspective. But throughout this series, I think almost every game that I've fallen in love with hasn't even been close to what a FPS game is. Next is gonna be don't waste your time. Sometimes the game is just a stinker or might not be supported by the devs or company. So legit, just move on from it. And yes, I'm mainly talking about the Call of Duties here. I forced myself to play Warzone 1 for like two years and then tried to force myself to play Warzone 2 nonstop. And I know it's hard to stop playing a game that you think should or want to be amazing, but sometimes a game isn't where it should be and there's nothing you can do about it. So instead of being like all the big content creators and complaining nonstop, go play something that makes you happy and is fun and you'll honestly thank yourself later. And the last general tip before I get into my own opinions is use a subscription-based gaming service to get the most out of your money. Now, I know a lot of people are iffy on this, but two full price games a year is like 120 bucks, which would be able to pay for basically a year of any subscription model. So you get way more bang for your buck and get a lot more out of gaming. And it honestly takes a lot of the risk out of it as well. I know there's a huge population of people that think the opposite. So if you wanna argue with a bunch of other nerds, I've already got a TikTok posted from a few weeks back where there's tons of comments waiting for your reply. So I'll go ahead and link that down in the description for you. But let's go ahead and dive into all the genres and games that I have fallen in love with and those that I dread every time they pop up. So for the good ones, we have story games, which will include genres and subgenres from adventure, action, RPG, and open world games. So some great examples of these titles are Batman Arkham Knight, Jedi Fallen Order, Dishonored, Shadow of War, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, and basically all the Fallout series. Now another genre I have absolutely got addicted to and honestly had no idea about was roguelikes or dungeon crawlers. There's something about that open-endedness and discovery of each playthrough that makes him just so much fun. You can play for 20 minutes and have a blast or grind for hours on end and not even realize you've wasted your whole day. So here are a few of my favorites. We've got Hades, Vampire Survivors, which was the simplest and funnest game I think I've ever played. Children of Morta, which is the main title that really got me addicted to this genre. In my opinion, it's a great balance of story, artwork, and gameplay. And then the other two titles that I did really like but for some reason just wasn't able to fall in love with them as much as the other three are Dead Cells and Slay the Spire. Now next up is my favorite genre, even after everything I've experienced and learned over the past year, but it's first person shooters. I just can't get away from them and they've always been my favorite. And I guess I assume they always will be. So some titles that I've thoroughly enjoyed over this last year are Metal Hellsinger, Slime Rancher, the Wolfenstein series, the Doom series, Halo Infinite and Battlefield 2042. Now, I know these last two titles were in a really bad state a year ago, 
but I promise they've done a ton of work on them and they're incredibly fun and enjoyable now. And you really should give them another chance. Oh, and then the last two first person shooters I want to throw out there are Titanfall and Rainbow Six Siege. These are easily both 10 out of 10s. Just straight up incredible game that every FPS lover should play. And recently I've had about 10 to 15 friends get back on Rainbow Six. And we have been loving it for about the last month. But I do gotta warn you, it isn't an easy game. So if you're brand new to it, Give us some time. It's got a big learning curve, but I promise it's worth it in the end. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of those one-off titles that I really did enjoy, but wouldn't necessarily say I enjoy their actual genre. So we can start off with the first title that I did get addicted to on this series, and that is Forager. I legit think I played it for five hours straight the first time I loaded it up. And in my opinion, it's kind of like a top-down, more chill version of Minecraft. It's got a great cute art style and really satisfying sound effects. And it's just a lot of fun and enjoyable to play. Next is Battletoads. It's kind of like the off-brand version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but they do take everything way too far, and it's a lot of fun with a bunch of humor. Then quickly, Warhammer 40k Battle Sectors did make me realize that I think I could be into turn-based strategy games, but I wouldn't say I've found one I've absolutely loved yet. And then lastly, we've got Ori and the Will of the Wispuses. This was just an extremely beautiful game. And even though I don't really like platformers or Metroidvanias, I just enjoyed walking around looking at this game. Now there's a ton of other games to talk about because this is only a small portion of what I played. So if you're interested in my ratings or certain genres, feel free to check out our spreadsheet or even scroll through our playlist here on YouTube or over on TikTok. Now let's go ahead and talk about the games I really couldn't get into. And remember, this is my personal opinion and doesn't mean these games are inherently bad, but just that I did not enjoy them. Except for Terraria, that's just a 2D Minecraft ripoff. So to start off with my least favorite genre, it's gonna have to be graphic novel games. I have no interest in feeling like I'm doing a reading homework assignment while playing video games. And I hate reading and have honestly always really struggled with it. So playing these games is kind of like torture to me and I hope I never have to play one again. Next, it's gonna have to be sports games. Now I'm not saying I'm an athlete or anything, but I've always played sports and enjoyed them, but playing them in video game form has always felt really silly to me. Now I can say I really enjoy a good Mario style sports game, but I've just never been able to get into those more realistic ones. Survival and crafting is also another genre that's kind of been a hit or miss for me, but I'm gonna say most of the time I find it to be very slow, boring, and tedious. And then lastly is the bane of my existence, platformers and Metroidvanias. I don't know why, but I just freaking suck at the actual jumping around and I hate all the backtracking. So no, unfortunately, I couldn't fall in love with the famous Hollow Knight. No, I didn't hate it, but I definitely didn't love it. And lastly, here's some titles I straight up just didn't enjoy, but there's definitely a community out there for them. We've got Generation Zero, Watch Dogs 2, Wasteland 2, Bug Fables, and then yes, Terraria. Now, I know I got a lot of hate for not liking this game, but man, I legit just couldn't stand it from the moment it loaded up. And I mainly was saying it's 2D Minecraft just to get under the skin of all those Terraria fans because they gave me such a hard time over on TikTok. Okay, so to end the video, I kind of want to talk about the hierarchy of what's important in video games because what I think I thought a year ago has completely changed from where I'm at now. So the hierarchy will go something like this. Gameplay loop is first and foremost the most important aspect. Then it's performance, story, sound design, which is gonna include your music, voice acting, and sound effects. Then art style. And then lastly is graphics. Let me kind of explain this conclusion real quick. So if a game is fun and enjoyable with a replayable game loop, you're basically gonna play it no matter what. It could have graphics like Minecraft, performance like Warzone, absolutely no story. But if it's fun, it's fun and you're gonna play it. And even though graphics are really nice, I would way rather have all these other options maxed out before I have super high def realistic graphics. So all in all, I've played 100 games in the past year, ranging from Racing with Ryan to Mortal Kombat. I've branched out into countless genres and subgenres that I've never even thought or heard of. I've downloaded almost two terabytes of data. I think I've recorded nearly 600 hours of footage and created over 300 social media posts between YouTube and TikTok. And all this has grown us over 80,000 followers. And at the end of it, I think I've really actually started loving video games again. So the plan for this year is to play another 100 games. And I hope y'all were able to at least find one more title to give a try. Thank y'all so much for joining me on this journey. And as always, I'll see y'all in the next one.